What is it that makes a component hard to change? Dependencies. The number of incoming dependencies to a component, the number of other components that depend upon it, make that component hard to change. This component uh, is responsible to all of these. It, it, if it changes, all of those are impacted. Uh, we call this kind of a component an adult because it is responsible to all of those guys and it has nobody it depends upon. It's responsible and it's independent. It is an adult. Then there's this kind of component. This kind of component depends upon many others, but nobody depends upon it. It is irresponsible. No one depends upon it. And it is dependent because it depends upon many others. Irresponsible and dependent. It is a teenager. We will have components of both kinds in our systems. Some of our components will be heavily depended upon. They will be stable, stable adults. And some of our components will depend heavily on others. They will be instable teenagers, variable, changing their minds all the time. We can actually measure this. We can put a number on it. We can say, okay, this component right here has three incoming dependencies and it's got one outgoing dependency. The incoming dependencies we could call CA for afferent couplings. The outgoing dependencies we could call CE for in or outgoing dependencies. And we can come up with this interesting number I. I is called instability. Instability is a metric that goes from zero to one. If I is zero, what does it mean that CA and CE are? CE is zero. The incoming dependencies are zero, or the outgoing dependencies are zero, and the incoming dependencies are not. Right? So there are many incoming dependencies, but no outgoing dependencies. That's the adult. What if I is a one? Then CA is zero. There are no incoming dependencies, but there are outgoing dependencies. That is the teenager. So an I of one is a teenager. It's unstable, instable. An I of zero is an adult. It is stable. And we can, we can do this math for all of our components. And then we have a very simple rule. The, sta the st stable dependencies principle says, depend on the or in the order of decreasing I. Every component that depends on another component should depend upon one that has a lower I metric than it does. Why? Imagine... Imagine a component named EZ. I call it EZ because I want it to be easy to change. Do we, do we create components that we would like to be easy to change? Of course we do. You know, we want to put all of our language files in components that are easy to change. We want to put all of our configuration data into components that are easy to change. We want to take all of the code that is variable and put it in components that are easy to change. And that means they need to be in teenagers. Components that depend outwards but have no incoming dependencies. So we want to create components that are easy to change. But there's another component out here, H. H is hard to change. Why is it hard to change? Because it has many incoming dependencies. And now the author of H mentions my name. He hangs a dependency on me. And what has he done to me? If H is hard to change and H mentions my name and, then de and therefore depends upon me, what has he done to me? He's made me hard to change. It is the perversity of software that someone else can make you hard to change by mentioning your name. Right? All they have to do is hang a dependency on you and they ruin your maintenance characteristics. So we've got this H thing with an I metric of zero depending on an EZ thing with an I metric of one. That's the wrong direction. What we want to do instead is split out a new component. Whatever it is that H wanted to depend upon, we need to pull out an interface so that H can depend on an interface and EZ can implement the interface. They'll both depend on the interface. Nobody will depend upon EZ and make EZ hard to change. That's using, again, the dependency inversion principle to keep these metrics in line. 